Lucchese crime family associate Henry Hill once claimed that it was John Gotti who personally murdered Tommy DeSimone. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organized crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the murder of Tommy DeSimone. In Henry Hill's book, Gangsters and Goodfellas, he claims that Colombo crime family associate Sal Polisi told him that Gambino family acting captain John Gotti personally killed Tommy DeSimone. The book states, Anyway, that's when Sal told me that Gotti himself had whacked Tommy. There were no eyewitnesses, so I don't know how he knew, but Sal was dead certain of it. I interviewed Sal Polisi, along with his podcast partner Adrian Martinez, to discuss what Polisi actually remembers about Tommy DeSimone and his murder. But first, a little information on Sal Polisi. Sal Polisi was a Colombo crime family associate. He was a regular at Gambino family captain Carmine Fatico's Bergen Hunt and Fish Social Club in Queens. Polisi was closely associated with future Colombo family soldier and feared killer Dominic Cataldo. Despite being connected with the Colombo family, Sal Polisi worked with associates from other crime families, such as Gambino crime family associate Ronald Foxy Giroth and Lucchese crime family associate Tommy De Simone. I asked Sal Polisi how he came to work with this pair of mobsters. Well, in uh, 1971, I got shot in the back by a cop. And while I was recuperating, my friend and, and partner in, uh, in the gambling business, Dominic Cataldo, said, let's stop over here. And I'll introduce you to these guys at this club. So we stopped at the Bergen Club and everybody in there knew him. And I got introduced to Gene Gotti. I got introduced to Willie Boy. I got introduced to everybody but John Gotti because he was still in jail. A few months later, I decided to open up my own little club. And that's how the Sinatra Club came about. And then everybody would come there and gamble because we had locked doors. The other clubs in New York City, all the Italian clubs, they had open doors. We had locked doors and we would play poker. And then uh, Foxy and Angelo, everybody from the Bergen came there because we had three or four different tables, a nickel and dime table and a dollar table. And then a few months later, when Gotti came out, he came there. At the same time, Dominic knew Jimmy Burke well. And Jimmy Burke came there. Tommy D. Simone came there. That whole crew from, from Jimmy Burke's Robert's Lounge came to the Sinatra Club. While we were there, I came upon the idea of maybe working with this guy, Foxy. I was introduced to him. But in those days, the families were at war. You couldn't just openly go work with somebody who was designated to another family. So Cataldo uh, arranged to sit down with Charlie Fatico. And Gotti was there. He had just gotten out of jail. And I was allowed to work with Foxy. And then Jimmy Burke had information. He was the, the greatest information purveyor for Coggle at a Kennedy Airport. Because his little joint called Robert's Lounge was like, you could almost walk to Kennedy Airport from, from Jimmy's bar and club. And then we had to sit down and we were allowed to work with Tommy. So the three of us formed a, a crew and we started hijacking trucks. We were hijacking trucks two, three times a month. And that's how we started to work together. That was in 72. Foxy Giroth was a popular mobster connected with the Gambino family's Bergen crew. He was someone that John Gotti was particularly close with, as Sal Polisi explains. Well, you know, Gotti was, uh, Gotti was born in 1940. I was born in 45, so he was five years older than me. Foxy was born in 47. So when Gotti was a young guy, 18, 20, 22 in Brooklyn, Foxy was a teenager growing up, and he would work you know, keeping an eye on if, if the police, if the police were in the neighborhood, 
he was like a lookout. So Gotti sort of raised him in the life of crime. As discussed, Colombo associate Sal Polisi, Gambino associate Foxy Giroth, and Lucchese associate Tommy De Simone worked together on various hijackings and heists. John Gotti was close with Foxy, but Gotti had little time for Tommy De Simone. As Sal Polisi discusses, this was due to Tommy's brother Anthony being an informant. And Anthony De Simone was eventually killed by Gambino mobster Tommy Agro. As Sal Polisi would tell me. Well, I didn't really know that Tommy had a brother that was an informant or a rat. I didn't know that. That wasn't like something you spoke about every day. And I don't think Gotti liked Tommy from the very beginning. But because we were, and Tommy was a good heist guy. I mean, he had balls of a lion. I mean, we did some risky stuff. I think they they, they allowed it. Uh, you know, Gotti and Fatico allowed Tommy to work with us because they saw that we we would make money. We could do two, three, four hijackings a month. That was a lot. That was work every week, every other week. So in the beginning, Fatico and Gotti got a piece of the hijackings. But after I realized that they were ripping us off, I talked to Cataldo, and then we exclusively sold to Jimmy Burke. Jimmy Burke was great. He had the whole setup. He could get the information. You just need somebody to take the truck. He could take the truck after you hijack it, unload it, and have a buyer in there all in one night. So Burke was uh, a master at moving stolen merchandise. In 1974, tensions would escalate between Foxy and Tommy due to the fact that Tommy had allegedly had sexual relations with Foxy's sister, Patricia. Henry Hill would write, It all started because of a run-in with Foxy, who was John Gotti's protégé. This guy had like 200 pairs of shoes and 100 suits. That's why they nicknamed him Foxy. He was around the neighbourhood a lot, and he and Tommy did a bunch of big mail truck scores and gold scores out of the airport, usually in partnership with Gotti's Gambino crew. They were also partners in the coke and heroin business until Foxy turned on Tommy. He was furious with Tommy for fucking his sister one night and beating her up another. Allegedly, Foxy would go looking for Tommy, telling people that he was going to kill him. Sal Polisi recalls about the situation. Right. Uh, Patricia and Foxy's mother actually lived in the same house as my wife and I for a while. We had an extra apartment, so we knew I, we knew her well. She was young and pretty, and uh, I wasn't really privileged to know everything that was going on, but Foxy just didn't want Tommy involved with his sister, and I think she might have been 18, 19. Foxy had already had a wife named Angela, who everybody knew. He had a girlfriend named Cookie, which was Sal DeVito's daughter. He was quite a man about the town, and I think Foxy got tired of him sneaking around after after Patricia. Um, I didn't know what went on back then. What I did know is he got whacked out and never found his body. Ronald Foxy Jarrow's body was in fact found, right where Tommy De Simone had shot him. Anyway, Henry Hill would echo some of this account in his book, Gangsters and Goodfellas. Hill would write, it went down like this. Foxy put the word out, I'm looking for this cocksucker, I'm going to kill him. And I don't even think Foxy was Italian. Tommy found out this guy was looking for him. Tommy said, fuck him, I'm going over to his fucking house. This is after Foxy already had warned him. Tommy did it just to rub it in Foxy's face. This is how crazy Tommy was. Foxy went over to where he lived in Howard Beach, in those fancy apartments, opened his apartment door and saw Tommy. Before you know it, he nailed Tommy with a shot in the mouth. Tommy went down on the ground. This was just what Tommy wanted. He baited him. Now, Tommy carried two pistols. He whipped one out and put it right between Foxy's eyes and let one go. Tommy killed him right in his apartment in Howard Beach, got up and walked out, just like that. Sal Polisi would actually catch up with Foxy's sister Patricia many years later. He recalls. And while I was doing Sinatra Club, the movie, I actually talked to Patricia in 2008 and 2009. 
And, you know, I just said I always missed her brother and how much I loved him. And we were close. And she knew that. Um, she did not say that Tommy beat her. She never said that. That was a rumor. So, but, you know, uh, whatever happened there, I was in jail. I went to jail in July. Foxy got killed in December of 74. Tommy De Simone would be murdered himself in 1979. A murder famously portrayed in the 1990 mob movie classic Goodfellas. Although in the movie, the real Tommy De Simone was reimagined as a character called Tommy DeVito. There has been much speculation around the reason for Tommy De Simone's murder. It is often stated that it was because Tommy De Simone had murdered William Billy Bats Ben Vayner in 1970, a mobster connected with the Gambino crime family's Fatico crew. Others state it was because of the murder of Ronald Foxy Giroth, another mobster associated with the Gambino family's Fatico Gotti crew. And others state that it was because of Tommy's involvement in the infamous Lufthansa heist in 1978. And perhaps it was a combination of all of these reasons. But who actually killed Tommy D. Simone? Sal Polisi would recall a conversation that he had in prison with mobster Angelo Ruggiero in the mid-1970s, a few years before Tommy De Simone was actually murdered, and then remembers the events leading up to De Simone's death. Okay, so let's take it back to December. My wife came to see me on uh, December 20th or 22nd around Christmas time. Already, Angelo, who was in jail there, told me and he said if you get out before I get out don't touch Tommy John and I are going to take care of this and then he told me that Tommy killed Fox so I didn't you know I mean I didn't want to create a lot of conflict I, I mean if I would have had the chance I probably would have killed him I never did kill anybody but I knew that he just ruthlessly killed foxy and in those days um you know so much going on i did become close with another captain in the gambino family while i was in prison i explained the whole story to him and he recommended that i stay away from tommy and he figured you know what he's gonna get it don't don't you go out there and try to kill him because that right after i found out only seven or eight months later i was out of jail because I won my case in federal court. And by that time, I knew that Angelo, uh, you know, was aware that Gotti had planned to kill him. Now that's 75. Angelo and Gotti are still in jail until 77 on the McBratney murder. And when they come out, I don't see him much. I quit hijacking. I was strictly a drug dealer. So I didn't go to the Bergen Hunt and Fish Club too much. I got away. I put the guns away. Foxy was gone. I didn't have a good partner to rob with, and I didn't want to rob because I can make more money with drugs. Eventually, Tommy came to me when he was at the halfway house, maybe October of 78. He didn't have any money. He asked me if I wanted to get involved in the score he was going to do in the airport. I didn't know what he was referring to, but obviously it was uh, Lufthansa because we had done a score in the airport when I went in to the airport with Foxy, Tommy, and we stuck up a cargo building and robbed a couple of million dollars worth of watches. So he, he knew that I was good at that. But by that time when he came out, I didn't want anything to do with him. I, I just didn't want anything to do with him. I hadn't killed anybody and I wasn't about to kill anybody. By 75, when I got out of prison, 76, I knew I had to get away from the mob. They were killing each other for no reasons. All the principles and honor and brotherhood went out the window. It was all about drugs and money. So I knew my time was short. I just didn't know exactly how I was going to get away. That was in 76, 77. It took me a few years and eventually I got out of New York City after Tommy, Tommy was killed. So I asked Sal Polisi if he believed that John Gotti personally killed Tommy D. Simone. From what, from what I heard, it, there was a guy named Tommy Agro. Yeah. I uh, supposedly heard that he was involved in the killing of Gotti. No one has ever really 
let lo- let loose of the whole truth. But um, you know, Tommy D. Simone's brother was killed by Tommy Agro, and I think maybe you know maybe right after the Luft- it was only a couple of weeks after the Luft- Lufthansa heist that Tommy disappeared. So here we have Sal Polisi stating that he heard that it was actually Gambino mobster Tommy Agro who pulled the trigger on the DC Moan hit. However, in his book, The Sinatra Club, Sal Polisi states the same theory, but also indicating that John Gotti was present. The book reads, I turned down John's offer to lend a hand avenging Fox's death. Gotti and Agro didn't just whack Tommy, They tortured him and they killed him slowly. Henry says that John made sure Tommy's death took a long time. As mentioned earlier, Henry Hill specifically states that it was Sal Polisi who told him that it was definitely John Gotti who killed Tommy De Simone. I brought this up with Sal Polisi who responded, You know, I really didn't elaborate on that. He just used that, I think, in that book. I never once said, I never once said that Gotti killed Tommy. I didn't say that. It said it in that book that that guy wrote with Henry. But in in his drunken stupor, he knew I was close with him. And he knew that uh, a wise guy named Mike Avetti told me, stay away from the idea of killing him. He's going to get killed anyway. And it was the best thing I did. I let it go. And then that was it. But uh, yeah, Henry would talk a lot of nonsense. He would. The main catalysts behind the theory that John Gotti personally murdered Tommy De Simone are the following two points. Firstly, the published accounts of Sal Polisi and Henry Hill. And secondly, the fact that both Ronald Foxy Giroth and William Billy Bats Benvina were associated with Carmine Fatico's crew, of which John Gotti would eventually become acting captain. But... Now we have Sal Polisi stating clearly that he didn't tell Henry Hill that John Gotti committed the Tommy De Simone murder and highlighting what many of us already know that Henry Hill fabricated many stories. So who are the other suspects in the Tommy De Simone murder? Former Lucchese crime family acting boss turned government witness Al Diarco would later tell journalists Jerry Capisi and Tom Robbins what he recalls about Tommy De Simone's murder. Diarco was at the time a long-time Lucchese associate in the crew of Paul Vario. The book Mob Boss states, The night De Simone was killed, Al saw him come into Gefkin's. He was all dressed up. He had on this nice suit and diamond cufflinks and everything. The word was around he was going to get made. Everyone in the bar seemed to know about it. In addition to Paul Vario, there were his sons, Peter and Paulie Jr., Pete the Killer Abenanti, who was another of Joe Schiavo's protégés, and Angelo Seppe, part of Burke's hijacking crew. Even the barmaid, the Sicilian girl, was congratulating him. Al saw De Simone leave the bar with Peter Vario and a member of the crew named Bruno Fasciola. About an hour later, Al went to a pizza parlour that Fasciola owned. De Simone was seated at a table inside, with Fasciola and Peter Vario. They seemed to be waiting for someone. I remember Bruno was standing up, and both him and Petey were wearing nice sports coats, like they were going out somewhere. It was De Simone's last dinner. They brought him to the place he was supposed to get made. They pushed him in and whacked him. To take this account on face value, then it would appear that it was perhaps Lucchese mobsters Bruno Fasciola or Peter Vario who pulled the trigger on Tommy De Simone. Some sources also believe that Tommy De Simone was murdered by Jimmy Burke. De Simone had been involved in the Lufthansa heist. We know that Jimmy Burke had many mobsters involved murdered when he was either tying up loose ends or unwilling to share the stolen cash. Tommy De Simone was a wild individual, and perhaps Lucchese crime family captain Paul Vario and close associate Jimmy Burke saw De Simone as too much of a liability, considering his past behaviour 
such as the murders of Billy Batts and Foxy DeRoth. Joe Dogs Iannuzzi, a mobster turned government witness, was a Florida-based associate of Gambino mobster Tommy Agro. Joe Dogs Iannuzzi would indicate that it was Tommy Agro who killed Tommy De Simone, not forgetting that Tommy Agro had also killed Anthony De Simone, Tommy De Simone's brother. And so, let's take a quick look again at the suspects linked with Tommy De Simone's murder. We have John Gotti, a man who, according to Sal Polisi, was keen to kill De Simone for the murder of his friend Foxy DeRoth. But in addition, Sal Polisi has stated that he never told Henry Hill that it was John Gotti who actually carried out this hit. And it is this alleged erroneous account from Hill that has helped fuel the John Gotti rumours. We also have the account by former Lucchese acting boss Al Diarco, who stated that the DC Moan hit was handled in-house by the Lucchese family, possibly by Bruno Fasciola or Peter Vario. Next, we have the theory that the murder was carried out by Gambino mobster Tommy Agro. Sal Polisi has stated that this is the version that he heard. And Gambino associate Joe Dogs Iannuzzi backs up this claim. Tommy Agro had previously killed Tommy De Simone's brother Anthony. And finally, we have the theory that it was perhaps Jimmy Burke who murdered Tommy De Simone to tie up loose ends after the infamous Lufthansa heist. In the comments below, let me know your thoughts on who you believe killed Tommy De Simone. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed listening to Sal Polisi's stories, please check out his YouTube channel with host Adrian Martinez. The link to this and for their Patreon is in the comments below.